how to draw a tiny Dutch Shepherd. Reference image is linked below, but this video is a key focus on drawing very small. So this size is a three by three inch, which is the smallest size that I've ever drawn. So of course I wanna start out with the eyes. I like to do a highlight, it's usually in black. Sometimes I'll use a dark sepia. And then with the eyes, there's a little bit of brown. And then apply the pupil, but make sure you're leaving room for the highlights, it's super important. And make sure that your pencil is very sharp. You can also use a light color to kind of apply a little bit of some highlighted areas in there. And just make sure it's nice and sharpened up. Then as we start to apply the first few layers, you wanna make sure that um, you're building up, but not drawing too heavy in the highlighted areas as well as like the mid-tone areas. You're gonna be drawing a little bit more heavy tones in the uh, shadowed areas instead. So I'm blending a mix between cool tones and warm tones here. Now it is kind of a two-tone dog because one side has more of the, um, the sun coming in, the light is coming in from one side. So I'm applying a little bit more of cool tone on the right hand side and more warm tones on the left hand side. I do think these are really important key features to make the portrait look even more realistic. So the more colors that you apply, the more realistic it's gonna look, as well as the more variety of cool tones and warm tones. Now, if you're wondering what cool tone is, it's blues, greens, and purples. Warm tones are reds, yellows, and orange. So with the nose here, the nostrils always black. I'm just gonna apply that. They don't have to look the exact same on either side. They never really do. And then with a dark sepia, I'm applying some of the uh, low lights and then with a light blue some of the highlighted features and make sure that the nose definitely is a little bit more outlined that way you know where it stops and where it basically where it ends and where it begins with the muzzle and then with a little bit of some uh, with a pink apply some of the warm tones in some of these highlighted areas and then on the right hand side you can see that I'm using more cool tones and then I'm gonna use this Mineral Spirit to kind of blend everything together. It's a Mineral Spirit oil, you can get it off of Amazon, but it is also in my materials list ebook, which is listed below. And then finish off some of these details here. You will want to apply a little bit more of a heavier pressure when adding some of these low light areas and make sure that the um, light around the eyes are actually emphasized. That way you can kind of tell the difference between the um, eyes, the eyebrows, and then go blending into the cheek there. So with the light blue, I'm just kind of blending and highlighting a little bit here, especially with the nose. And around the mouth area too, you wanna just apply only a little bit. And then make sure you're applying some warm colors for the uh, left hand side there. And just keep going, keep applying some more layers, especially with the black and the dark sepia color because this dog is definitely a darker color. But when it comes to drawing small, you can see that there's not a lot of texture that you have to apply. Just making sure that it is nice and well blended is more important than getting all of those details with the um, little strands of fur. It's definitely a different method than when you're drawing bigger, but getting those key features like the mouth, the nose, the eyes, all of those, getting them very sharp is one of the most important parts for drawing small. Now with the neck here, you could see that there is a feature, a white little spot on his neck that's really important. You wanna make sure when you're drawing somebody else's dog, especially, or cat, that you are incorporating those key features because that's what makes the dog their, or what makes the animal their animal. And then uh, you do use a little bit of green. The green kinda like implements more of a natural tone based off of the uh, surrounding environment. So using a warm like sepia or sienna color, it really does help to warm up some of these tones here. And then of course you kind of want to blend it all together. I just use a very small paintbrush for that. And then you can add more detail afterwards. It's very nice and buttery smooth after you do that. So you can use lighter colors to create a little bit more of a highlight after you've applied that mineral spirit. And don't forget to make sure that all of the edges are nice and smooth and that all the tooth of the paper 
is not showing through. If you still see some of the tooth of the paper, you're not quite finished yet, so just keep going. Make sure you're using light colors to kind of blend if you don't want to use a dark one, and especially around the edges, make sure it's nice and smooth instead of bleeding out uh, around because that just makes it look more like an incomplete portrait. So the left hand side has more reds and browns, the right hand side has more grays and blues in it. And now you can really see where the actual lighting is coming from. That's so key, very, very important for making your portrait look realistic. Now with the ears, because this one is a, um, you know, of course the ears are like the key feature of this dog. I waited until last to draw this part, but you can see that the middle has some pink and some reds in it, kind of showing that fleshy tone that's underneath in that ear. And then going through and just kind of applying more of the same uh, type of methods and same colors. You wanna make sure you have consistency with colors. There is a little bit of some blues in there too, but once you kind of blend it all with a um, mineral spirit, it does blend and get a little bit darker, but don't worry, you can apply other colors to lighten it up and other um, darker colors to apply more texture. And I'm almost done here, but I really hope that this video was super helpful. If you are wanting to learn to draw, I have a learn to draw your own pet program, which is linked below, as well as a drawing membership where you can click on any class that you want to uh, learn to draw. And uh, if you want to know what kind of materials I'm using, there is an ebook where you can download and it has links to all of the materials that I use as well. But Thank you so much for watching. Please continue to watch the rest of the uh, steps here. There isn't a whole lot, but I do use a little bit of this slice tool, which is also in the materials list to etch away some of the details, the highlights, and the um, little whites of the fur that's coming in, especially with the ear here. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.